Imagine a pill that would allow you to cheat death. Now imagine another pill that would improve your health. Pretty good, huh? Sign me up. Well, the housing market has been taking those two pills for the past 40 years, and unfortunately, their effects are about to wear off. In this video, I'm gonna paint a clear picture of the future of housing supported by facts and data. If you agree with my premise, then you'll likely agree with my conclusion, and that's that home affordability is about to plummet. On top of this, corporations are moving in to monopolize the ownership of homes, which will result in a long-term landlord market and a faster rising rental rates, further separating the haves from the have-nots. So watch this video to the end and you'll be in a position to take advantage of the biggest change the housing market has seen since the end of World War II. Hi, I'm Joe Manasa, author of The Business of Getting Business and the creator of Manasa.com, where I've helped tens of thousands of people buy and sell homes. I would like to help you too. If you already are a subscriber, thank you and welcome back. If you're not a subscriber, please consider becoming one now. We offer the most thorough and accurate housing market reports on YouTube, plus answers to your real estate frequently asked questions, and we also provide virtual tours of some of the most beautiful homes in Tallahassee. Please remember to like this video, then hit subscribe and click the bell so that you're the most informed buyer or seller in your next real estate transaction. I'm gonna start the analysis of current and future conditions by explaining what home ownership is and is not. Common sense might lead you to expect that home ownership rate is the percentage of adults who own their own home, but that's not the case. The home ownership rate is a measurement prepared by the U.S. Census Bureau that examines all single-family homes, apartments, condominiums, and housing cooperatives in order to compare the total number of owner-occupied units to the total number of units. So, when you hear the term home ownership rate, it's the measurement of all the people who live in homes that they own compared to all homes in the U.S. This graph tracks more than 120 years of U.S. home ownership rate by decade starting in 1900. The reason that I've produced this video is to allow you to examine U.S. home ownership today so that you can understand this forecast of its future. I pulled a quick summary of the past from the HUD website. This shows home ownership from 1890 to 1960. The home ownership rate fluctuated in the 43 to 48% range, meaning for 70 years, less than one half of all homes in the U.S. were owner-occupied. From 1890 to 1920, the home ownership rate fell as immigration and urbanization offset the rise in income. Income growth increased in the home ownership rate during the 1920s, but the Great Depression more than wiped that out, so the rate had fallen back to a low of 43.6% by 1940. During the 1940 to 1960 period, the home ownership rate rose by more than 18 percentage points, from 44 to 62 percent. This remarkable transformation was facilitated by higher incomes, a large percentage of households being in prime home buying age groups, the FHA-led revolution in mortgage financing, the GI Bill of Rights, improved interurban transportation, and the development of large-scale housing subdivisions with affordable houses. The big takeaway is that the U.S. home ownership rate changed significantly after World War II, from less than 50% to nearly 62%. After 1960, for the next 60 years, we've seen the U.S. home ownership rate stabilize from as low as 62% to as high as 68%. Currently, the U.S. home ownership rate is 65.4%, last estimated in April. I believe we'll soon see a trend of falling U.S. home ownership rate that will eventually lead to a rate of 60% to be left behind in history, bringing back the sub-50% levels. Now, let's examine my reasons why I believe this will come to pass. I believe the coming change in home affordability will alter the U.S. home ownership rate significantly. What many people do not realize is that home affordability today is awesome. They hear of soaring home prices and believe that home affordability is through the roof, but that's definitely not the case. Home affordability and how it changes is perhaps the most important factor in how the home ownership rate will move in the coming years. By forecasting home affordability, we're also forecasting the likely change in home ownership. This graph plots inflation-adjusted home affordability from 1991 through 2021 by using the Consumer Price Index to adjust all years home prices back to 1991 levels, and then using historic mortgage interest rates to calculate how monthly mortgage payments compare over time. 
The red line in the graph plots the inflation adjusted average monthly mortgage payment and it is that red line that we use to measure home affordability. It is clear that today's adjusted payment is lower than all previous years except for 2011 through 2017 plus 2019. So even as home prices skyrocket, home affordability is still far below what buyers were expending in the 1990s and the 2000s, and home affordability today is only higher than the years following the bottom of the housing market collapse. Home affordability will soon be challenged greatly, as both the price of homes as well as the cost of borrowing money will be rising significantly in the relatively near-term future. Now let's move on to an examination of mortgage interest rates, including a forecast of what is likely to occur in the coming years. According to an annual survey of recent home buyers conducted by the National Association of Realtors, 87% of recent buyers finance their home purchase with an average 88% loan to value mortgage loan. This is an important statistic. It means seven out of eight buyers borrow money for their home purchase, so the interest rate they are charged is largely important variable in home affordability. Also, it has been my experience when selling homes for the past 30 years that most buyers purchase homes at the high end of what lenders will allow. So the mortgage interest rate charged to buyers is highly impactful on the price of the home they can buy. This graph hints at why we're on the brink of a generational change in mortgage interest rates. It plots each month's average 30-year fixed mortgage interest rate for the past 50 plus years. The blue line shows the general decline of rates for 40 straight years. Think about what this means. For the past 50 years, people who purchased homes were able to refinance their homes and pull out cash after five or so years. They could do this while also lowering their monthly payment due to lower interest rates. And for those that moved, they could purchase a more expensive home and keep their payment similar or lower if they used the equity they had built up as a down payment on their next home. When rates fall, home affordability rises, so we have several generations of homeowners who are able to obtain lower interest rates whenever they decided to move up to the bigger home. I'm fairly confident those days are over. When this graph is extended over the next 50 years, I think it is highly likely that we'll see long-term trends of rising rates. Today's buyers will be shocked to discover that the 50-year average rate is nearly 8%, and the 40-year average 10 years ago, prior to this recent decade of historic low rates, was nearly 9%. The 40-year average is at 9%. Interest rates are cyclical, and today we're at the very bottom end of the low end of the cycle. Mortgage interest rates are going to return to normal, and then move above normal because that's what 800 years of interest rate history has shown always happens. This is why I'm advising buyers today to purchase as much house as they can stomach because they will likely not be in a position to move up to a larger, more expensive home with interest rates and property values rising at the same time. There will be a huge impact from this on the U.S. economy as well. Homeowners' use of refinanced equity has put money in the U.S. economy for the past 40 years. With rising rates, the inability to refinance a home that results in an acceptable monthly mortgage payment means that the refinance market will diminish, and so too will the massive spending in the economy from homeowners who've grown their equity. The equity will be there, just as it always has, but it's likely to become harder to access as mortgage and HELOC rates move higher. This table and the next one provide a good visual of what today's median price home buyer will experience over the next 20 years. It works by taking the median home price in the U.S. today and appreciating it at a conservative growth rate each year. Under each home price is the salary required to purchase the home at the interest rate in the second column. Just for reference, the first column contains the previous year that that interest rate was available. So here's how we use the table. Follow the third column from the left under the year 2021. Today's median home price in the U.S. is around $355,000. Today's mortgage interest rate is around 2.93%. So that means the typical buyer needs a salary of around $62,000 to be able to buy this median priced home. As an example, if mortgage interest rates moved up one half percent, then the salary requirement would jump 2% to more than $63,000. Now, say a buyer decides to wait a few years, perhaps to 2024, before buying a home. This buyer has been hearing that home prices will drop and thus has decided waiting would be prudent. But all the indicators suggest home prices are going to continue higher due to the lack of home building in the U.S. for the past five years. The low supply, coupled with a strong demand, will result in the median price home 
to rise to nearly $450,000. And we expect rates to be much higher by then too. Even if mortgage interest rates only move to 5%, then the required salary to get a median price home will be more than $90,000. Do you think the average buyer waiting to buy a median price home today will earn 50% more three years from now? I doubt it. Now let's take a look at the table that has been created for the move up buyer. The typical move up buyer purchases a home 150% the value of their current home. So that's what I use to prepare this table. It shows that a buyer who purchases a home today at the US median home price and then eight years later sells the home in order to buy its replacement at a price 150% of the first home's value eight years from now. I'm not sure many buyers will be able to handle the change in the monthly mortgage payment. The monthly PITI on the first home calculated using today's low mortgage interest rates is just $1,808 each month. But with the rise in home prices conservatively estimated and the rise in mortgage interest rates also conservatively estimated, the monthly payment on the next home will jump 137% to $4,283 each month. Do you think a typical move up buyer is prepared to go from spending $1,800 each month to $4,300 each month? I don't think so. I know the numbers like these are hard to believe, but the reality is that mortgage interest rates are likely to move higher faster than the table projects, and I think home prices will move higher at a faster rate too. Builders in the U.S. have not been producing enough homes for the growing population, so the supply of homes is far too low and prices will continue higher. The final graph in today's video serves to help me forecast the future of mortgage interest rates. Now, forecasting changes in the mortgage market is highly speculative at best, but there are signs that will guide us to the changes that are coming. Today, we're going to look at how mortgage interest rates move when the Fed changes its federal funds rate. Mortgage interest rates are not directly tied to the federal funds rate, but the graph here shows us that in the long term, there's definitely a correlation between the move the Fed makes and the changes that follow in the mortgage market. This graph shows 50 years of average mortgage interest rates, the solid blue line, and 50 years of the effective federal funds rate, the solid red line. The dashed lines reveal the one-year average of each rate and show that the mortgage market does generally follow the Fed funds rate, and the median difference between those two lines is about 3.15%. The black dashed line plots the average difference between the two rates, and it clearly shows the average mortgage interest rate has stayed at least 3% higher than the average Fed funds rate for the past 30 years years. So what I take away from this graph is if the Fed moves the funds rate to 1% at their next meeting, we should expect mortgage interest rates to move towards 4.15% over the next year. Again, these rates are not specifically tied together, but history has shown that the correlation exists. So why does this matter? The current federal funds rate is 0.1%. But signs of inflation are very obvious and several members of the Federal Open Market Committee, the FOMC, have stated that they believe it's time to raise the federal funds rate to battle inflation. When the FOMC's statements are generally positive on the U.S. economy, mortgage interest rates tend to rise. Conversely, the Fed is generally negative with its commentary, mortgage interest rates typically fall. Right now, there are a lot of positive signs in the economy, and traditionally, we would be anticipating an increase in the Fed funds rate. In a recently published opinion, one FOMC member said, using the traditional model for determining the proper Fed funds rate, today's rate should be close to 5%. If the FOMC acted on that, which they don't think they'll be doing, a federal funds rate of 5% would suggest mortgage interest rates moving above 8% over the next year. Again, it's not likely to happen real soon, but with the FOMC sentiments changing, we have to be expecting a rise in the federal funds rate no later than early next year. And that means we should anticipate a rise in the mortgage interest rates to follow. If inflation starts pushing higher than 2% for an extended period of time, it will signal the beginning of the rise in mortgage interest rates that will cool demand in the housing market because home affordability will decline significantly. Now that you understand why I believe mortgage interest rates will rise significantly in the coming years, let's take a close look at why I believe home prices will also be moving higher. 
There are several reasons that new home prices will be moving higher at a faster rate than we've observed in the past. The National Association of Home Builders claims that the lack of available lots is a big reason that more new homes are not being built. The reality is that there have been a surplus of developed lots left over from the housing bubble back in 2006, and many of these lots had been foreclosed upon multiple times and thus were picked up by builders below cost. Well, those lots that we've been building on for the past 10 years are all about gone. That means future homes will be built on lots at the real cost of development, and that means the land underneath new homes will be more expensive. In Tallahassee, I believe it will add 15% to 20% to the overall cost of a new home on average. But there is a new hidden cost that will soon be pushing the cost of materials and labor much higher too. The minimum wage in Florida and many other states is going to move higher at a faster rate than ever. By voter mandate, the minimum wage in Florida will move to $15 an hour over the next five years. Let's look at that in context. We saw the minimum wage move 66% higher over the last 17 years, but now it'll move 75% higher over the next five years. Take a look at the solid green line in the graph. Look at how significant the slope growth is going to be changing as we move forward. This is significant without even considering the temporary increases in material cost due to the COVID pandemic. We must be prepared for the cost of construction to soar due to the coming changes in the minimum wage. These higher costs mean that the shortage of homes in the U.S. will be filled with new homes that cost a lot more than did new homes in recent years. This will increase the average price of all homes at a significantly faster rate than what we've seen in the past, thus putting even more pressure on home affordability. It won't be long until the combination of higher home prices and rising mortgage interest rates make home affordability an unattainable proposition for many people who have good credit and who would like to buy a home. And this is why I see the generational shift in the housing market occurring. We need more homes, no matter the cost, and therein lies the opportunity for well-capitalized entities to purchase homes for lease to those that cannot afford them. This has already begun in many areas, but we've only seen the tip of the iceberg on this issue thus far. Real estate, and specifically the housing market, has always been a perfectly decentralized market. The majority of homes are owned by individuals, and in the past, it was rare to find a single owner with vast holdings in the housing market. But all of that is changing. Companies such as OfferPad, Zillow, Home Partners of America, which has 17,000 homes, BlackRock, which has 80,000 homes, and Invitation Homes, just to name a few, are gobbling up houses and even whole neighborhoods in order to lease them to people who cannot afford a home. Wall Street loves the steady rental income, and this is a rapidly growing industry that is just in its infancy. Imagine Tallahassee, or your market area, where 25 to 50% of the homes are corporately owned and managed. These are well-funded entities that are not concerned with short-term cash flow issues, so they are empowered to execute at a level that most local investors could only dream about. Rental rates will move higher at a faster rate due to the centralized command and control of the market. People who earn below the median income level in each area will find it hard to afford to buy a home, and thus many people who would have been homeowners in the past will be tenants in the future. I truly see the American dream being ripped away from a large portion of our population. Go back and take a close look at the home affordability graph I showed earlier in the video, and let it motivate you to go out and get as much home as you can handle today, because all the signs in the market show a future where you will not be able to afford to purchase a similar or larger home. The combination of today's relatively low home prices and historically low mortgage interest rates means that today's home affordability is better than you will see for the rest of your life. If you would like to see more videos about current housing market conditions, I've assembled a great playlist that you can view by clicking on the box on the top left corner of your screen. For a playlist of my top tips for home buyers, just click on the box below it. Please remember to like this video, check out the links below it, and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss anything.